Okay, guys, today has to be one of those days for me, one of like the most exciting days. Like you've, you've heard me geek out when we've had Anita Morjani on or Dr. Evan Alexander on or Harville Hendricks three times. Like I totally geek out, but I have to tell you, Dr. Northrup, I've been after for 10 years. <laughs> today, <laughs> today is like, oh, like I am finally like, okay, we're going to talk and we're going to talk about lots of stuff. So uh, without further ado, if you are just watching this on the video, there is a lot more of an intro on the audio podcast. Um, there will be an intro below this, her bio and all of the information about her newest book, her revision of her 30 years ago book, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, will be underneath this in the video. But please come over and check out the podcast as well. So Dr. Northrup, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Yes. Yeah, so I want to quickly, I'm going to, I'm going to do the fastest thing. So what ends up happening is my audience, they love me, so they're okay with it <laughs> as long as they're part of my audience. But, you know, I'll get to this conversation with someone who I've been following for a while, who I have a lot in common with, and I'll spend a couple of minutes getting you to know me so that we can get to the level of let's talk up here because I want to let you know that I know all this down here. So we don't That's have to great. start at the yeah. ground level. So I'm going to go very that. quickly through this. Okay. I've been, I found Abraham in 2002, been studying the law of attraction since then, have a very popular show called Spirit, Purpose, and Energy after I started this one, which of course manifested the right kinds of people for me and blew up very quickly. Didn't think I was a law of attraction teacher until I manifested my first event and people came from all over North America. And I said, guys, I'm, I'm not a I, I'm not an expert in law of attraction. They went, yes, you are. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll own that. Um, I've been in the functional medicine scene since 2006, uh, bioidentical hormones. I've done tarot, goddess cards, psychic stuff, clearing inherited emotional DNA. I had to write it all down. Uh, quantum physics, love quantum physics, epigenetics, which those two words I have not heard talked about very much during what's going on right now. And I keep telling people, you know, the numbers, like everyone wants to go number crunching. I'm like, none of it's even like, none of it even matters because we're not even talking about the things that actually matter, which is epigenetics, quantum physics, and law of attraction. That's I right. digress for a second. Um, intuition, increasing intuition, EFT, EMDR, nonviolent communication. There has been no other physician that I have been more in alignment with on every single level than you. Um, I have not been... Uh, there's no other physician. And I think I found you 10 years ago because I was starting in the functional medicine scene within a clinic. I was a personal trainer within the functional medicine, medicine center. And, uh, and I know I heard, I saw something online and bioidentical hormones, I believe, paleo diet. And then when you said Abraham, all of a sudden I, you started posting quotes and, and law of attraction quotes. And I was like, whoa, my, my ears are like, whoa, who's this? And, then, <laughs> and since then I've started following you and I was like, oh yeah, there's nothing that, like, I almost feel like I'm you younger without the medical degree. And, yeah. and because I'm like, we've been in alignment like with everything, everything comes out of your mouth. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. Like I know that you talk about deep intuition. Um, everyone who's watching, we are not going to be able to cover everything I want to cover today. So I invite you right now to go over to Dr. Northrup's Facebook page. She's been doing the great awakening. Yes. Today is day 39. And I know you haven't recorded yet because I looked <laughs> um, Today is day 39. So please go back and watch all of them. She didn't do every day. There was a little break in there when you had somebody die, I think, and yeah. you were mourning and grieving, but watch all of them because this is information you want to know. And if you trust me, which you do, because otherwise you wouldn't be here, I trust her. So please soak up as much as you can from her. And of course, as we're going to talk about this book, if you don't have any of her books, you have to get this book. Yeah. So Dr. Northrop, I want to ask you a few questions very quickly. Doom, 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 doom. Um, I know you're a Libra. <laughs> so yes. what is your moon? My moon is in Pisces. I have cancer rising and my north node is in Aries on the 10th house cusp. My moon is also in the mid heaven. And I have Jupiter in the seventh house in Capricorn. Mercury, Mars, and Venus. Uh, Mercury is in the fourth house. It conjuncts my sun. Neptune is down there as well, conjuncting my sun. I've got four planets in the fourth house uh, that are conjunct the sun. Um, Neptune is down there as well. Uh, Venus is in the fifth house in Scorpio. Hmm. And Mars and Pluto are right on top of each other at 15 degrees Leo in the second house. Okay, there's the Leo. Okay, um, Libra and Pisces, that fascinates me, but true nodes in Aries, North node. Okay, um, Pisces, Sag rising, Sag moon, Sag North node, Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mercury, okay. Mercury's in Aquarius, Mars is in Aquarius, Venus is in Aries. So a um, lot of fire, a lot of Sag, a lot of truth seeking, a lot of freedom, 
Yeah. Model. Like, I, like I've been good through this whole thing, law of attraction wise, when we talk about this pandemic until the day it was like, you have to wear a mask. I was like, uh-uh, you all can do what you want to do, but you're not telling me what to do. And I love what you said. Like, I took this to the beach this morning, okay? I took oh, good, good. I, I, I was like, I, I think I texted or I wrote to you on your Facebook page because I was like, wait, what, what is that form I need? What is that form? And so I- That's I right. And I think that you were, were you trying to like give me a PDF of it? Like, I really want to get that, a copy of that. I'll mine is Mine is weird. <laughs> because it cuts off when I printed it out. But we all, we all need that, first of all, because if you ever follow uh, Rashid Buttar, he points out that what happens when you wear a mask is your CO2 increases, you're actually increasing your viral load, putting on the mask itself increases cortisol and epinephrine, that lowers immunity, it is not a good idea. Now, if you have a cough or you're sneezing, it's a very good idea. Other than that, no. Right. And so I'm like, the beach is opened up here today. And they did. So oh, they thank did. God. Right. Okay. They did only for exercising, which is fine. Cause that's why we went. Yeah. But, but you know, I'm, I work from home. I'm, I'm a podcaster, I'm a podcast coach. I'm a health coach, a relationship coach. So I do all of the things like I, my business is great because I've been working from home and doing things like this, but you know, going outside, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I haven't gone outside very much. I don't go to the store. I send my boyfriend to go to the store because he wears the mask. I literally had to wear the mask twice for like two, like two minutes. It's the longest two minutes of my life because yeah. I'm so against it. Now at the same time, I've worn a mask in places where people are smoking or not worn a mask, but you know, like taking yeah. your, your scarf or something. Right. But yeah. yeah, every cell in my being is like, this is not right. And you can't tell me what to do. So, um, so thank you for this. And for those of you that wonder what this is, you want to tell them what this is? <laughs> yes. The American for Disability Act was passed a while back and it says that if you have a medical condition that prevents you from wearing a mask, nobody can ask you what that condition is. If they do, the first fine is 50,000, the second I think is 170,000 something. Uh, but this is, this is a law. So if you have a medical condition in which you cannot wear a mask. So the medical condition could be the mask is strangling my freedom of speech. <laughs> you do not need to tell anyone what the condition is. Now, all of us could make the case that wearing that mask is a danger to our health because it is. It, because it is, unless you are trying to protect someone from an active respiratory infection that you have. That is the whole purpose of the mask. So... Thank you for that. Yes. Um, I know we're going to, I want to talk about your books. I didn't have women's wisdom, women's bodies, women's wisdom, the first edition. You, you, it was out in 1994, I believe you yes. said the first yes. edition. Yes. Um, I was still living in New York. I was still in college. <laughs> it was like a very long, so again, I wasn't at that place yet. In fact, I was, yeah. an, act, I was an actress back then. I, my brain wasn't even on. I didn't become a personal trainer until 1996. Yeah. So I wasn't even in the field yet. And I had, and I didn't know what I didn't know. So now that I've seen you hold up the thickness of that book, w would yeah. it be safe to say that women's bodies, women's wisdom, the first edition, and I know there's a lot more to it, but that you took that in making life easy. Did you take, cause I, I have making life easy and goddesses never age. Is it kind of a, I mean, is it really just like a compilation of y your entire career? No, it actually no. is not. What okay. it is, is an owner's manual for the female body from um, preconception and pregnancy to menopause basically. So it's sort of the owner's manual for um, birth, not to death, because to death, we then went with um, making life easy and goddesses never age. Mm -hmm. So this one is kind of all the things that you would normally go to the doctor for. So there's a chapter on breast health. There's a chapter on the uterus, the ovaries, the cervix, the vagina, the vulva, the, all of that stuff, sexuality. Um, so it's kind of a, a Bible of what you need to know, what I call everything that can go right with your body and how to make that your experience. And it also debunks all kinds of stuff that women have been brainwashed with, like uh, Gardasil shots for HPV, um, any uh, hysterectomy, you know, chronic persistent uterus. Um, you know, it's just how to avoid a cesarean section, what happens in labor and birth, what supports a normal birth, breastfeeding, breast health, it's all of that stuff. 
but it has, unlike, let's say, a, a normal Western doctor who would be giving the standard, you know, belief oh, no, systems and no, paradigm, it, <laughs> right? No, right. no, it, it, it is how to literally make the most of being in a female body. So there's nutritional plans, there's how you deal with difficult emotions. I call it, by the way, the post Me Too version of the book, because when I wrote it, everyone thought my patients were crazy. They didn't listen to women. Um, the number of women who'd been sexually abused or raped was astounding in a small town in Maine, middle-class women, mostly white. And, um, you know, my colleagues said, uh, I only see normal women. You see all the nutcases. And uh, so the book was inventing a language of women's health. Everything in women's health is actually disease screening. There's no health in women's health. It's just, okay, when are we going to have the breasts removed to prevent breast cancer? When are we going to get the uterus removed to prevent um, ovarian and uterine cancer? It's literally, women's health is, keep coming back. We haven't found it yet. We will. And then we'll remove it. So, so now we have, you know, cool, better ways to do a hysterectomy. I don't care if you're doing a hysterectomy with a robot or with uh, two hands. It's still a freaking hysterectomy. And we still have one in three women getting those. Now, if you had an operation where one in three men lost their testicles and their prostate, do you think that they'd sign up for that? Not likely. Not likely. Because they have been entrained that their organs serve them and they love their organs. Women are trained that uh, this is one of my patients said, well, every woman in my family has had a hysterectomy by the age of 50. I guess I better sign up for mine. I mean, I can't believe, really, how brainwashed women are. They're so brainwashed that they will have their newborn get a hepatitis B shot. This is insane. It's, anyway. It is insane. I agree with you. And yeah. it's sad. And, and I love one of the things that you talk about that you promote heavily is about finding your own intuitive voice yeah. to, to really determine whether or not whatever course of action is being told to you. Like I'm the person who, and whether it be old soul empath, um, you know, and Sag, Sag, Sag and Pisces in me, you know, when I was in college, after college, actually, I was living in New York city. And I think at some point, this was like in the late nineties, I think I'd heard some kind of report about the KKK or something. And I literally thought I was in another world. I'm like, what? Like what? That still exists. I like really had no idea because I live in my own world of happiness of, of, you know, yeah. high energy vibration. So I'm like, I, it didn't even like, I couldn't believe it. And so now fast forward, when I first started the show in, nine, in 2014, I had on Dr. Elizabeth Plourd several times and she, whoa, she goes to town with telling people, you do not need a hysterectomy under so many circumstances. And she was so, super emphatic about it. Fast forward to two thousand to last year, twenty nineteen, and didn't think it could happen to me. Had fibroids and listened to my body the entire time. Did alternative everything, everything, um, and continued to listen to my body until my body said, "Okay, it's time." Yeah, went went for something that and and, and surgery was never going to be really an option. I was my body said no at every turn, and and when I looked at what was option, so uterine artery um, embolization. Yeah, yeah, UAE, yeah. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. doctors were like, no, 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 if you have any desire to get pregnant, you shouldn't do this. And so right. that immediately got taken off the table. Well, I waited and then I got a hit that said, check it now. So I went on and I checked it now. Now it's the fertility preserver. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I called the doctor who I worked with the first time, loved her. She wasn't doing them anymore. Gave me a recommendation, went straight to the physician doing this, to the surgeon doing this. And I walked in and I got the MRI, or yeah, the, um, the MRI. And I realized, oh, they're going to want to put me through like their thing. So I quickly told the, the practitioner who took my blood pressure and stuff. I said, oh, by the way, I don't need to look at the, at the films. Just yes or no, she'll do it or she won't do it. You're right. She comes in and she wants to explain. I'm like, no, no, I don't need to see it. Will you do it or won't you do it? And she said, I will, but it's not my first recommendation. And then she goes on to say, well, I'm, I'm a vegan and I'm woo. You're woo, I'm woo. But I, she's recommending a hysterectomy. And I looked her dead in the face and was like, yeah, that's not happening. Then she sent me to the gynecologist <laughs> right. because the gyne cause I didn't have a gynecologist. Like I, I took responsibility mm -hmm. for my health, decided what was best for me, went mm -hmm. there, asked, will you do it? If she would have said no, I would have gone to somebody else. Right. Now I got to go back down the chain because now I'm a high risk patient. She goes, she thinks I'm a high risk patient. <laughs> then she goes to the gynecologist. I go to the gynecologist and the gynecologist says to me, she's younger. She's cute. She says to me, 
you make me nervous. And I said, <laughs> and I said, I said, it's going to be okay. Right. Like, she's like, here's the problem. You have the size of a baby's head sticking in the middle of it that could fall. I said, I said, and there's a chance it'll just deteriorate on its own and everything will be fine. And she went, that's right. yeah, that's a chance. I said, well, that's what's going to happen. Right. <laughs> so, right. 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 So it was just, it was a test that I was ready for. My intuition led the entire thing, even when the doctors wanted to take, I was fighting with her in the, in the emergency room going in for the, for the procedure. She wanted to keep me overnight. Anyway, but the point is, and, and, but I'm not a doctor. And this is what I have struggled with at times I, of getting to the place of, so you sit in a position where I understand there's also risks. And I want to talk about the risks that you took in your practice when you wrote the first version of Women's Body is Women's Wisdom. I want to know what, what came out of that. I mean, you're still on the leading edge, but I feel like because you have a doctorate, you have more authority and people will listen. I don't because I followed my intuition and it's only been in the last, since I started my show, that I'm willing and I'm very scientific. I have, I'm 50% left and right brain, but there's such a strong intuitive hit about so many things that I don't need the science for. I have been talking about Dr. Bruce Lipton's book, which by the way, he's coming on in July. So I'm going to have to read it, which I'm ready for, but I've been like biology belief. Yep. Totally. Yes. What, what no. do I need to know more about that? I don't need no. to know more about that. No, no. Right. So, no. so can we talk about why you, your experience in becoming a doctor and then your intuitive hits to shake up the system and write this book and ask the questions. Uh, it all came from my childhood. So let's be clear. I was radicalized before I started. Okay. I had a, you know, a sister who died in a pool of her own vomit when she was six months old. The doctors didn't know what was going on. My mother couldn't hold her. So I, you know, I experienced what that was like. I had another brother born, he wouldn't eat, nobody knew why. The nurses said to my parents, I'd get him out of here if I were you, they don't know what's going on, he'll die if he's in here. So my parents tube fed him every hour on the hour, my dad was a dentist, so he'd put down an NG tube and they would feed him formula because he would not eat and nobody knew why. At a year, he was 10 pounds. My mother was told he was mentally defective, that he wouldn't live. Uh, they finally found a doctor who would put down a, um, fiber optic scope, a woman, and that was a, a real pioneering uh, procedure then. And she saw that his esophagus was so eroded from the NG tube. She said, take the tube out, let's just see what happens. And in two days he started to eat. At a year old, I had never seen him without adhesive tape on his face, holding in the tube. And today he's got a little bit of immune um, compromise, like a, a few autoimmune things, but he's a very healthy, 50 something and uh, you know, sort of no thanks to the medical profession. And when I first did my interview at the University of Buffalo, my, the attending physician of my brother was the guy who interviewed me and he was sure that my brother would be dead. Then when I was interviewing at Yale Medical School, my dad ended up in the cardiac intensive care unit with chest pain. And in two days he called my mother. He said, come and get me. They don't know what's going on. And so my mother went in to get him. The nurses were furious. He walked out with the chest lead still hanging off him. And when I got home, he's sitting up in a chair, two thir fluids two thirds of the way up his lung fields. They did not know what was going on. He had an infectious pericarditis. He did not have a heart attack. It was misdiagnosed and you know, chances are good they would have killed him had he stayed in the hospital. So I grew up um, wondering why doctors don't tell you the truth. Why don't they say when they don't know Mm -hmm. um, and uh, my aunt and uncle, my dad's brother and sister, were both medical doctors. So I wasn't, you know, against the medical profession. They were family, uh, but they always made fun of my dad. We were into um, organic food. We had a compost pile. We spiked the vitamin C with in the orange juice. My mother made yogurt to take down to the street with people on antibiotics that my dad was treating. So I grew up with all of this stuff already. And then when I got to medical school, I loved what I was learning. I saw how useful it was. If you're bleeding to death or you come in with multiple trauma, I married an orthopedic surgeon. And, uh, you know, so I, I saw how, what could happen with multiple traumas. That's all beautiful. But when I was in residency, my cousin calls me. She said, I have a fibroid tumor and I'm treating it with a macrobiotic diet. And I thought, okay. So I met with Michio Kushi, the guy who brought a macrobiotics to the United States and brought Erwan natural foods to the United States. And Michio and I would sit and I would sit with him during his consultations. 
people would come in with these enormous charts, having been given up for dead by the medical profession. I would watch what happened when they changed their diet. Not with all of them, of course, but some had an absolute turnaround. So I began in early days of my career to have people from the macrobiotic community of all over the world come to see me because I understood and honored what they were trying to do with their quality of their food, the quality of their blood. And then I started to give lectures with William Castelli of the Framingham Heart Project. And he'd show slides of um, the arteries of, uh, that, that diet could completely clear the arteries. And he would then say, and the only way to get the proper treatment in the United States is to be a monkey because these were all in monkey studies. And, you know, and at the time, the arrogance of the medical profession was not lost on me. These people come in, the medical profession says, go home, you're terminal, you're going to die and um, get your affairs in order. So then they come in with the chart to Michio Kushi and some of them were helped. And then the medical profession has the hubris to criticize them. This it, it, to me was unconscionable. And then the way uh, doctors have treated chiropractors, you know, well, he's not a real doctor. Are there some bad chiropractors? Yeah, there's some bad MDs too. So the arrogance of the profession, the inability to think outside the box, um, to be criticized. I used to have to close the door of my uh, office so that my colleagues wouldn't hear me talking to a breast cancer patient about nutrition. That was considered off the table. You no, know, nutrition has nothing to do with it. It's insane. It's insane. So I knew, on the other hand, on the other hand, I loved my profession. I loved my colleagues. I loved the nurses. I saw how much good was done. But the, um, you know, it's funny. I listened to um, Rashid Buttar today, a YouTube that he did. And he said, doctors are not the brightest people in the world. He said, what they are very good at is following orders and uh, working under very heavy workload conditions. Doctors have the heaviest workload of anybody, but they're very simple and they follow orders and they don't want to get out of line, but they are not the smartest people in the world. And I thought, yeah, and they follow orders and they really don't want to, uh, you know, the, like the increasingly now, worse than ever, is these frickin' protocols. So you go in for any visit and all they're doing is checking things off on an iPad. Uh, Zach Bush, one of my heroes, talks about how the intuitive, um, hands-on feeling approach to medicine is almost gone. And now what do we have? Telemedicine. There, you have to be with somebody. Yes, there's plenty you can do. You know that from a, a screen and us and all. There's a lot you can do. But nothing takes the place of touching somebody. And so I've just always seen the problems. On the other hand, I had enough courage to do what I would do because people like you came to see me. And if I had someone who trusted herself, then I was okay. But even with my practice, only 5% of the people that I saw would really trust themselves when the chips were down. An example, I had Carolyn Mace, the medical intuitive on speed dial. She would do um, <laughs> a $25 reading on any of my patients. And she'd tell me what was really going on. Do you know how many people could handle that information? 5%. Oh, yeah. 5%. Because, uh, you know, she once told me my very first reading with her, she goes, <laughs> she goes, you know, your heart rhythm has changed in the last three years. You are a rescue addict. Do you hear me? You are a rescue <laughs> addict. And if you do not change that, then you, you're going to have a heart condition. Now, my whole family, both sides, died of heart disease. So that got my attention. The other thing she told me is if I hadn't left my practice when I did the conventional practice, she said you had in your electromagnetic field, in your energy field, you had an ovarian tumor that was forming. Um, so that was already in the ethers around mm -hmm. your body. It never manifested because I left. So I knew, and I knew from watching my patients that if they didn't get a handle on these emotional things or legacy things in their, in their legacy, 
it would manifest as a physical illness. So I always knew that. Like, get out before. Now, I too had a fibroid, I used to say, the mm-hmm. size of my husband's head. So you I know, heard it I was soccer that, ball. I heard you say yeah, soccer ball. Soccer once. ball, but you know, yeah. big. And, um, you know, and finally just had it removed by an infertility surgeon who was just the most wonderful, wonderful man. He repaired women's pelvises. He didn't care how old you were. And I went to a, a woman who does numerology, astrology, and the Kabbalah. And when I told her about him, she goes, well, I wonder what he did to women's pelvises in the past. <laughs> so, <laughs> to make up you know, for we, now. Yeah, we just know the hologram of it, the whole hologram. So, yes, I started to have lawsuits in my second year of my residency, and I had one or another lawsuit going for my entire practice. And I finally um, stopped seeing patients when I got two lawsuits in the same day. One for a nurse practitioner who I worked with uh, for a patient I never saw. And I finally said, and, and my lawyer said, you're perceived as the top of the flagpole. So therefore, you can be sued by anyone about anything. And I had a lawsuit going when the first edition of Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom came out, failure to diagnose ovarian cancer. And she had had a normal uh, ultrasound. And so I'm about to go out on the road on a book tour in 1994 when you were met by an author um, guide and you went around to all the radio stations. And my first place that I landed was Salt Lake City. Um, and I... And I, my lawyer said, this entire book could, is admissible in court. And I said, the book is a prayer. It's not a scientific treatise. And the day I was to go and get on the plane, I got a call that the lawsuit had been dropped because, there, you know, because stage three ovarian cancer is incredibly difficult to diagnose early. We, we don't have the diagnostic capability. But what I also know, and you know, is that somebody can manifest stage three whatever in a week Quickly. if the soul yep. wants to get your attention. Mm-hmm. So I, I always had to practice according to my own soul, the dictates of my soul. In fact, I, I think I had someone tell me years ago, um, you know, one of those psychic people you go to who said lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, you have not said what you know. This time you have to do it. So, you know, that Pluto Mars in the second house, 15 degrees Leo, it's like a rocket. It's a rocket compelling me to do these things like the Great Awakening series that I have done. I'm just compelled to do it. I started on 4 2020 which was the 444 portal. And, that, and the next day was day one after we had a million people or more meditating all over the planet and uh, changing the Schumann resonance of the earth. So, and of course, Bruce Lipton, who you're going to have on, suggests that we all at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. do a visualization of meditation of how we would like the world to look because that's what's going to change this, um, this apocalypse into what where we're really going yeah and it's 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 hopeful for people who are you know i I even had to listen to an abraham this morning to pull me out of a trigger uh, because it because because it's you know because the energy fields are so overwhelmed with the fear right it's never been higher and 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 this is unprecedented in terms of being able to like i want to get on a plane i've got a mastermind meeting we're doing in june and and of course the fear became I'm not going to wear a mask. So how's that going to look for me? Is it going to be that I'm going to get into fights? Am I going to be not able to get on the plane? Like, you know, I went down that rabbit hole because I'm a problem solver. So when the doctor said to me, you know, the, the, the gynecologist said, well, here's what we're afraid of. And the reason why you're coming to me is so that we can do surgery in case this thing falls and it, it sits in your, in your pelvis and it can't get out. So I'm, I'm, I'm racking my brain and I'm like, well, and I'm coming up with, I'm thinking great solutions because I'm a great problem solver as long as I have information to pull from. So I'm like, well, what if we gave me Pitocin? Like, would that help me pass it? No. Okay. What if we, you know, blah, blah, blah. And and I'm, and I'm giving them all these different, like, what if we do this? And what if we do this? And I again, I have enough information that I have a lot of different options and they're all going, no, no, no. And I'm like, okay. So I said, I'm just going to, I just know what's going to happen. You don't know, but I'm trying to like negotiate here with what possibly can happen, but I'm feeling confident in the amount of information that I have 
and in my ability to problem solve. So because this is new, I have found myself slipping back into the yeah. fear. I mean, I have to go out and appreciate every time we walk outside, how many people don't have them on. I'm like, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. You trust, you trust, you get it. And to hear you talk about how millions of people are on the same page, I'm like, okay, because I'm not around millions of people. So I don't have them telling me my, my tribe is, and your tribe mostly is, right? I know we all get negative feedback at times when it goes against whatever they think they believe and what they want to fight for. Right. And, and when you talked about the other day, uh, you know, you'll know if you're the one who's supposed to get up and fight. And I battle with, I've never in my lifetime, especially since dealing with Abraham and, and law of attraction, have ever felt the need or the benefit in protesting. I'm like, I'm not gonna, like, I'm just gonna be in my bubble. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vibrate higher than all of you and none of this is gonna affect me anyway. But I have to say that with the beaches closed not too long ago and people getting, and I'm like, my body went, oh, you're gonna go. <laughs> it's like, I didn't go, but if it comes up again, I'm like, no, I would go. And I'm like, wow. Well, so that, I'm, okay, but you know how, yes, you'll be shown and there'll be an impulse. So for instance, you know, in your state of California, I saw that YouTube video of Cordy Williams, the megaphone Marine. So uh, to me, that was an example of absolute uh, true masculinity to protect and serve, that he would get up as a former Marine, take the megaphone and tell the riot geared cops to stand down, what, like you're really going to billy club a woman with a baby who would, is just standing up for her constitutional rights. And that video because he was moved. You see, he was moved from inside mm -hmm. to stand up. And Mario Martinez, who started the Biocognitive Institute, talks about the immune system has morals. And so when you see the innocence of another being threatened, when you stand up, it actually improves immunity. And so by uh, Cordy doing that, he uplifted millions and empowered millions, because that's what really needs to happen now. When I uh, step out like I do on social media and say something, it empowers others to do, to do the same and then to become a little more um, thick skinned with the inevitable criticism if one questions the mainstream narrative. But again, I have my North Node in Aries, that's the warrior. So I have to do it. But if you are, I don't know if you ever follow magenta pixie out of London, but she says, there are two types of people. They're the indigo people, and we have to dig down and find out things. And then there's the crystal healers, and the negativity is too much for them. They can't do it. They're better off planting flowers and just having a very positive electromagnetic field around their bodies. And we need to realize that we, each of us, as we raise our vibration, we help the entire collective, but you have to serve in the way that aligns or, you know, as Abraham says, the thought that feels better. And, mm -hmm. you know, for many people, a couple of weeks ago in Maine, what felt better was to go up to Augusta and join a protest, mainly because the protest, what I've found, because I was very active in the uh, vaccine mandate situation in Maine, is that I met wonderful people and I met a sort of a whole family of people who were all standing for constitutional rights, health, and freedom. And so it created this wonderful family. I think that that's what we're all doing now. The light workers are reaching out to each other. We're finding each other. We are not uh, consuming the mainstream media um, virus of fear because the fear is far worse than any virus could possibly be. 10 years ago, I was working with a client and I won't lie. She listened to too much news, uh, you know, oh, and sometimes yeah. oh, too yeah. much news. So I didn't always trust. And of course she was, she had a Virgo moon. So what I learned about Virgo moons over the years is how hard it is to change them and how they don't change until they manifest an absolute pushed against the wall, rock between a hard place thing. They will not change until they literally manifest the worst possible scenario that forces them to change. And it took me years of working with a couple of Virgo moons to understand that. I, again, tried this. I, didn't, I had so many tools. I'm like, I'll try this way. I'll try this way. We'll do it this way. I mean, you, you, when you exhaust me and there is nothing left, I'm like, okay, this is something different. Oh, Virgo moon, Virgo moon, Virgo moon. Oh, here's the through line. All you Virgo moon people. Are That's people interesting because, uh, because Sagittarius people are the most high energy people on the planet. I mean, nobody can outperform a Sag. I mean, to boldly go where no one's gone before, that's Sagittarius. 
Right, which I I, I have it in droves. Um, yeah, that plus, yeah. my, I love my my Pisces soul energy, right? My Pisces, right. you know, main energy, and then of course having yeah a little bit of Aquarius in there is the future thinker, the the futuristic looking at. I can see the trends coming before they happen. Right. But she had this. She was on somebody's newsletter like back when, and I'm sure you still can get them, but they were like printed and they got mailed to her. She wasn't right. great on the computer, but she was. She had a newsletter and she was saying things about statins, about how doctors were being fined if they didn't prescribe enough statins, and then. She she mentioned the chipping and I don't know if Bill Gates was mentioned or not, but it was the chipping and vaccines. And at that point, the chipping, I guess maybe I just decided I don't, even if it's true, I don't want to know it. <laughs> like yeah, I, yeah, and I'm going to, and yeah. I'm going to decide that I'm not going to be there. So the fact that it's happening right now is, is like, I'm like, wow. Okay. And again, it's the constant decision whether to how to focus on it, how to feel about it and how to direct my energy. And I've I never been more challenged really minus the doctors and actually with the whole thing with the hysterectomy like when i went in for that and she looked at me and said hysterectomy i almost laughed and i thought to myself this isn't really happening to me i had dr plord on the show in 2014 i i know how over prescribed hysterectomies are and she's and she's trying to paint the picture and she started saying oh hysterectomies are over prescribed blah 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 but this is the best choice for you and again, I was, you couldn't touch me. I'm like, no, it's not going to happen. Um, but, I, but I had to go, wow, that really still happens. And so when I got to the end of the road with this situation and one of my clients who doesn't do woo-woo said to me, I have a hard time believing some of this. I think I sent him a picture, a, a story out of Dawson Church's Mind to Matter about mm -hmm. energy distance healing mm -hmm. and, and changing someone's you know, healing overnight or within a weekend with just energy being sent to them. He's like, I have a hard time believing it because you couldn't heal what happened to you. And I said in that moment, and I started to cry and then he cried, I said, I have come to realize that the reason why I had to go through this yeah. is because A, I otherwise would never end up in the hospital. I will elect at very, like, I have to be bleeding and dysfunctional on every level to go to the hospital, number one. But number two, I believe that there's going to come a time where I'm going to have to stand up for and educate women on not giving up their uteruses. I think I had to go through this so that I could see firsthand that even with the amount of information I have and who I am, not that I doubt it for a second, but the fact that it was still happening to me at this time, when there, when I felt like I wanted to yell at everybody in a way and say, don't you know about epigenetics? Don't you know about neural, uh, neural pathways and creating neural pathways in order to experience what it is that you want to and that you, I just thought this is an irresponsibility to tell me that I need this when I don't need it, it was like a 5% chance that it would go wrong. I'm like, God, yeah. doctors are like lawyers. You look at the, yeah. the absolute worst case scenario, you blow yeah. it up, you scare the shit out of everybody. And That's then you right. want, That's I, but right. I wouldn't have known otherwise if I hadn't gone through it. And, right. and, and so coming out the other side. And so, you know, again, I just really appreciate that you finding you, however I found you, I, I'm sure it was on Facebook um, and watching. I remember you did like a five part video series when you were selling goddesses never age. Yes, and one of the yes. things you talked about was the black sheep of the family. And it was the first time I'd heard and went, I'm a black sheep. I mean, I knew that, but you know, the way that you had put it yeah. made me feel good about that. I was like, yes, I'm a pioneer. I'm the black sheep. And that's nothing to be sad about because it's those of us who are changing, who are, who are educating people and leading with light, with divine love. And people can choose to follow or not. They're on their own journey. They're on their path. But yep. it's, it's it, being able to step out and show people what's possible when they didn't consider it before. Because before I was sort of anti-vaccine, you have to have information. You need to hear someone's bad story. You need to have education of someone saying something different so that you, you could consider and then check with your own intuition. Well, what do I think is right? And, oh, that sounds good. Or that doesn't sound good. That doesn't quite fit. And so I appreciate this work that you've put out into the world. And for those that are listening, because I have a range, I have a range of young yep. millennials yep. and I've got people in their 50s, 60s and 70s who are clients that have been listening for five years. For, you know, obviously for anyone in the later age group, um, let's, let's talk to why they need to have this book, why they want to have this book, both the both end of the spectrum, the young ones who, when yep. I was in my twenties and not in this field, I didn't even think about it. And then the ones on the end who might think, well, but I'm past all that. Okay. When now epigenetics, we've talked about that, right? Okay. If you can go back in time read through, let's say, the menstrual cycle chapter, and you read the stories, it will start to ping. It will start to bring up your own history. And then you get to upgrade it. And remember that everyone who heals herself 
heal seven generations past and seven generations in the future. So this is, remember, this, this is a Bible of women's health, not a Bible of women's diseases, and here's all the drugs and surgeries you need. This is the meaning of the ovaries, the meaning of the uterus, the meaning of the breasts. It's the chakra system. It is what each area of the body represents. So for instance, right now, right now on the planet, we are all in the midst of an upgrade of our first chakra. Our first chakra is our connection to the earth. It wires in our blood, our immune system, and our bones. So we are now needing to connect with the earth. And it, it also is, it influences our sense of safety and security. So for those of us like you and me, our safety and security comes from our connection with source, but also our trust of the earth. But for the collective, because of the brainwashing of the medical profession, their sense of safety and security comes from, oh, well, they'll invent a vaccine and then I'll be safe. And once we're all vaccinated and chipped, then everyone will be safe. Once everybody's wearing a mask, everyone will be safe. This, these things are safety, external safety. So what we have to do instead is you acknowledge the agenda of the controllers, the service to self groups, and we could name them, but we don't need to. And then you must declare your sovereignty. We do not consent. I am a sovereign being. You do not have the right to do this to my body. That's the constitution. It's also the, um, uh, what was the, the thing after World War II, the Nuremberg trials, where they said, you know, after they found that they had experimented on all those Jews, many of whom, by the way, came to the United States. So have a look at Operation Paperclip. That's all very well documented. So they've been carrying on their dirty deeds long after the war. So we declare our sovereignty. And then the third thing we do is we forgive the darkness. We forgive it and we thank it for creating so much pressure that we are all going to morph into a new human species, an energy-based species. Um, Alberto Villoto, the shaman, calls it homo luminous. So we, this is the sixth extinction that we're in here. So we are now becoming more intuitive. Think about it. We're all shut in. So we have more time. And when you shut down our ability to connect with each other, when we're not in our cars, when we're not rushing every which way, we are actually connecting more solidly energetically with each other than ever before. So my inner circle community is bigger than it has ever been as a result of this. So that's what, that's what we have to do. So first chakra, remember, is your immunity. And if you're constantly scared to death and you're wearing a mask, you are setting yourself up for getting the flu, getting pneumonia, getting a common cold, getting a cancer, getting whatever. Second chakra, that's what my book is. It's second and fourth chakra. Second chakra is money, sex, and power. That is basically what it is. You've heard the term shake your money maker. Well, that's where the ovaries are female balls. That's our relationship with money, sex, and power going after what we want. Um, and then the heart, we, what we really need to do, and I was listening to David Icke's entire three-hour thing with London Real, and he said, when we come from the heart, when we come from love, we become unstoppable because the electromagnetic field of the heart is 5,000 times bigger than the electric electromagnetic field of the brain. Or the third chakra is... Uh, self-esteem and personal power, but it's also fear. So fear is the solar plexus and the head, you read the bad news and you get scared to death. But when you come from the heart, when you, when you alchemize it all into the heart, then as David Icke said, I must be the most powerful man in the world. That one of my YouTube videos gets 9 million views and they're so afraid of me that they take it down. Now the censorship right now in the different platforms, if you can't see that, I mean, if, if you can't see that, if you actually believe that they are protecting you, oh my God, 
censorship now on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is the same as book burning. It's the same. Like go read Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit, whatever it was. And by the way, the Fahrenheit number is the exact um, temperature at which a book will burn. That's what Fahrenheit whatever means comes from that. I'm glad that organically everything I've wanted you to say has pretty much come out of your mouth. The things that, cause like that I want you to validate so that I'm not the, they're saying, okay, can we go over this? And the conspiracy, although you haven't said conspiracy theory yet. Um, but right. It's the people that even if like, if it's not true, then why would you need to take it down? You would just be, you would be trusting in your knowingness that it's false. And, and again, the whole pretense of pulling something down because it's not accurate. I'm like, really? Like, have you watched YouTube before? Do you see how many things people are posting that like it's, but it, because it threatens, it threatens us understanding the truth. And it is, it's unfortunate that so many people, I mean, I, I have, I've known Mickey Wells's work and I watched Plandemic and I think, I don't know if I saw it on your page or somebody else's, I'd already seen that snippet, but I mean, it was like trying to play catch and fire. Like, wasn't every it? Time you take it down, you put yeah. it back up. Yeah. Walk yeah. Them all. Walk them all. You put it up, you take it down, put it up, take it down. And I'm like, Jesus already. All right. But then at the same time, we could say that's really frustrating. I mean, you two, um, Facebook flagged me for posting it and said, well, we've taken this down because it's, you know, we have verification or something. I'm thinking, what? Like, that's when, again, that's when I got a little, like I was out of the vortex. I was totally out of alignment when I got my hand slapped. I'm, I, I learned what I learned to do the right thing, to feel good about what I'm doing. And so when someone else, even though I know that they're corrupt and that they're doing it for their own reasons and they're afraid in the moment it happens that I'm told I'm wrong or bad, Sometimes, and I've healed a lot of this where it doesn't really happen anymore. Um, but you know, occasionally I'll find a new subject where I get triggered. I'm like, oh, gotta heal that thing. Okay. Um, but it happened and I, I felt badly. I thought it's gonna make me look bad just for half a second. I knew I know, where it was coming it's true. from. But it's yeah. True. Uh, my daughter and I, when we were doing the vaccine mandate thing in Maine, um, she, when she was little, she'd say, why can't you be like the other mothers? And do you have to be that, you know, and all of that. And she's like a real community extrovert. She loves to get everybody together and all of that. But she then learned about aluminum and what it does to the brain. And, and the fact that we have these chemtrails that are putting uh, nano, nanoparticles of aluminum in the atmosphere. And once she learned, and, and with 5G, that'll make our bodies into an antenna to be more easily controlled. And once she knew all this, she goes, okay, okay. I finally have to do something, even though I'll pr probably be shunned at daycare. And so the two of us put out a YouTube video on five things everyone needed to know about health. And the next day, of course, there's a mother at daycare who wouldn't look at her, which, you know, it's like then her nervous system goes crazy because it feels terrible to have people hating on you. But she just said, I cannot allow this to happen to my children I, I will never let it happen to my children, but for me to not say anything because I'm afraid of looking bad, it is not morally okay. So not so she lost a bunch of followers because she's got a big social media platform and then gained twice as many because people said to her, oh, I see that you actually stand for something. You have nothing to gain and everything to lose. By, by even addressing this subject. And so she found that she has far more people. And that's what really has happened to me as well. Um, you know, oh God, don't talk about that. Oh, this, this really bothers people. Um, I've had people um, say to me, friends, has your account been hacked? Has your Facebook page been hacked? It's like, no, no, the noose is off my neck. I don't have to fit in anymore. So this current edition of Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom is just fiercely the truth. I saw I, that you, I saw I, you add in the emotional pieces to it. Yeah, I'm not, I, not even, no, I'm not, you know, come on. Why do so many women have thyroid problems? Because we're afraid to tell the truth and we need a little more iodine and all of that. But still, I mean, come on, <clears throat> we have a noose around our neck. So when I have the courage to say what I know to be true, but lovingly, lovingly, it gives other people the courage. And have I lost followers? Oh yes, women who said, I've followed you for years. Now you're into all these right-wing conspiracy theories. Okay, so everyone, let's, as a reminder, as a reminder, the term conspiracy theory was 
put out by the CIA. The CIA made up that theory, by the way. The mainstream media, by the way, has made up another one because, you know, again, if they work by splitting us from each other. So now we have the anti-maskers. Can you believe it? We had the anti-vaskers, the anti-maxers, mask maskers, and now we've got, you know, the conspiracy theories. And here's the thing. That's it's it's called don't look over there. That's a she's a conspiracy theorist. Oh my god. Well, what's happened is those people have left ungrateful and then a whole new group comes in when you speak truth to power. And I can't not do it. Well, you were about ready to, because my audience hasn't heard this yet, uh, the conspir- that it was created by the CIA to avoid us asking questions about? About the uh, Warren report for the assassination of JFK. Because that, that report doesn't hold water. And uh, they didn't want you, and JFK was questioning the deep state. So they couldn't have that. So that's why he was assassinated. I've heard you talk about uh, on your Facebook page um, that were there were doctors' offices raided by the FBI for giving uh, injections of vitamin C. That is correct. In Detroit, they did that. And uh, one of my friends, Jonathan, I can't remember his last name, but this guy did a lot in the early days with bioidentical hormones and all of that. His office was raided at gunpoint for recommending supplements. And that happened in the um, 80s. There have also been, um, oh, at least 20 holistic doctors um, committing suicide or being murdered. So this is no joke, folks. However, the deal is, and again, by the law of attraction, Andy Weil said to me, you can say anything as long as you're not angry. So Mm -hmm. I think that the key really is that we say these things, but we say them with humor and we say them with love. Because when people are afraid and they're asleep, they will do whatever they're told to do. I mean, right now, in my opinion, the mask is just to see how far you can get people to do these things. And the six foot social distancing. However, I had a friend over today and she, re- and she has a lung issue. She has a lung problem. And she said, I was really hoping that when they open things up, people would, would social distance because she really feels much safer if people social distance. So I, and then I listened to Candace Owen who says, um, my freedom does not end at your fear. But on the other hand, there's this middle ground where I want to respect somebody's say, comfort zone. As another human being, I want to respect that and I want to be compassionate. And there are many people who really, really believe the narrative and they really believe that doing all this stuff is keeping them safe. I have friends who've been in New York City apartments for weeks without really coming out. And of course, Cuomo has pointed out that 66% of all the new COVID people have been quarantined in their apartments for two months. So how did the virus get in there if that worked? See, here's the thing. None of this stuff works. It, and it doesn't pass the sniff test. It just doesn't. Um, and people are starting to wake up, which is why you have to keep censoring the stuff. But I am... I am no uh, stranger to this. I mean, I was saying things about mammograms. They would find things that you would die with but not die from. Um, I was against circumcision, which I've done hundreds of as part of my job. And I've never been popular for, you know, for going against the mainstream stuff. I came out against Gardasil on Oprah in 2006. I said, you're not going to like what I have to say, but I think this is a mistake. I had no idea how much of a mistake it was. I mean, girls are crippled, they're dying. Um, And then the cervical cancer rate, because the Gardasil has fragments of HPV in it, uh, we're seeing a whole group of young women who got the Gardasil who are now getting cervical cancer. And we've never shown that it decreases the risk of cervical cancer, ever, ever. But we've never shown that a fetal monitor does anything except increase the C-section rate. So I've been on the front lines of questioning orthodoxy for my entire career. So this is nothing new that I'm doing. But, you know, no, dear, dear friends, I have not been hacked. I am just no longer having to toe the line to keep my job. 
or to keep my hospital privileges or to keep my board certification or whatever. And at this point, no one can take away my MD and no one can take away my board certification. And I gave back my medical license in 2015. I just gave it back. It was time for renewing. And I thought, I do not want the Board of Registration in Medicine to have a noose around my neck anymore. I want to say what I have to say, because I can tell you with what the activism I've done in Maine, I would have been reported many, many times over. All the doctors are terrified to say anything. And now in medicine, you know, like a Yelp review in medicine, your review and sometimes your pay is determined by the number of vaccines that you give. And this is insane. So you do know I could keep you here all day if you'd let me and probably into next week because every one of these topics could be flushed out a little bit more. I'm just trying to condense everything in. And of course, the, the, one of the main goals of today, besides introducing my audience to you, for those that don't yeah. know you, and I shared one of your... I shared one of your great awakening videos with my group yesterday. And I said, oh, I love you. it. I, and, and then they started sharing it. So I saw them sharing. I love her. And I'm like, yeah, you're welcome. Um, like, I say, <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I know. Can I get a little credit? Um, but I, I don't need it. But I, I said, you know, watch this. And I, I made a joke and I said, I'm interviewing her. I go, we're going to talk about her book, but come on, I'm going to want to talk about so much more. I go, anybody have any questions? So, but then they just started sharing it with other people. And I had a client yesterday. She said, she took time out of her session. She's like, I want to talk to you about, um, the, the doctor that you posted, Dr. Northrup. So tell me about her. I was like, okay, let's talk about this during your session. That's cool. I'm going to interview her tomorrow. Um, so, you know, the bottom line for today literally is to get people right now to buy uh, women's bodies, women's, bodies, women's bodies, sorry. wisdom. Yeah. And again. they can, you know, they can see it on my Facebook page. You'll see it. Instagram, you'll see it or just drnorthrup.com, but you can get it on Amazon, <laughs> you know. And it's, it's ginormous, but it's, it's the Bible. Ginormous. So if you're yeah, a woman yeah. and you know yeah. women, buy it for every woman because everybody, every woman needs it no matter what age you're at and what stage you're at because you right. address all of it. Right. I, I was reading it and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so much. And it's so detailed on so many things. And, and I love it. And everybody That's needs Saturn, it. Saturn in Virgo in the third house. Okay. <laughs> detail oriented, detail oriented. <laughs> get it right. Get it perfect. Get it right. Make yes, sure you yes. get the mind, body, soul, every aspect of every point of view and linear and to do da, da, da. Yeah. That's no. it. You yeah. got it. You yeah. got it. No, yeah. it was great. You know, I want to, I want to end with us just addressing, I want to get your advice on what you've been doing. And I heard some of the things on some of your videos. So yeah. when this whole thing started, it was yeah. around my birthday and I w had a trip planned for my birthday to go to Italy. And oh. we had, my boyfriend oh. and I had a meeting with uh, Moleskin uh, in Milan that they had then called and canceled. Basically they had sent an email and said, you know, with what's going on, Italy's going to shut down and we're going to cancel this meeting. And we would advise that you don't come. <laughs> and so we looked at each other and I, he looked at me, he's like, he's like, okay. And I was like, Okay. I mean, okay. Meaning like we're still going. And then of course my mother and his mother, well, are you going to still go? Yeah, yeah I'm right. still going. Yeah, I'm still going. Um, and so we had an, uh, you talk about law of attraction, things unfolding. Like literally we felt like Jesus, the Red Sea had parted and we walked on water. Everything unfolded beautifully, perfectly, never in a half of a second. Now I'm pretty paleo. I'm gluten-free. I'm mostly dairy-free. But of course I was in Italy and that was not going to yeah, hold yeah. up. So yeah. I thought, all right, all of a sudden I'm going to be in by, you know, taking in a lot more inflammation. So what did I do? This is before all the stores got raided. I went to the grocery store. I bought extra liposomal vitamin C. I got my colloidal silver. I was yep. taking, I got my algae. I got extra vitamin D. Uh, I got other probiotics and digestive enzymes. Like I just loaded up on every possible thing I could to keep my immunity. I mean, we were in the airport spraying colloidal silver literally every couple of hours. Yeah. And, you know, and I did what I needed needed to, to just at least try to balance out what I was already doing. And again, it was one of those moments, like, again, where I'm thinking, what is going on with you people? Like you get, because I, I'm, I'm healthier than most you, like you want to be me. I'm so healthy on every, like emotionally, spiritually, whatever. So when I came home and I'm thinking, why are you all so freaking out? Like, first of all, how you respond in your body is so many different levels. And I, you know, you're not going to, if you get sick, that's not my fault that your immune system sucks. It's not my fault. You're full of fear. So again, I, it, it didn't sink in until it got worse and the fear grew that 
we're really, this is really happening. And yes. oh my gosh, we're in a, we're in a, this is a, a unprecedented, uncharted territory. And am I living in a, in a twilight zone? I, I want to link, I want to tell one more short story because I want to hear your advice to me on this. Mm. When the election happened, the last election, yeah. uh, I, I sat in my law of attraction space of, of course, we're more con like, of course, you know, what I want to have happen is going to happen. Of course, how people are not going to do the other thing. They're going to have what I, right. And then when it happened, I thought my, my like energy sunk so low. And I thought, oh my God, is this really, it was a confirmation of the state of lack of consciousness, the, the lack of awareness. So in that moment, I had to recover for a while. And I'm finding that my trigger right now is that thinking that, well, that didn't work out. So, so I want to hear from you how you're, what, how you're making sense of seeing the great awakening and that it actually materializes and actualizes. Well, you want me to get political here? You don't I have, have to had... get, you can or okay, you can. Let me, you. let me just say that I believe that what has happened as a, it, I could make a case that everything that's happening now was pre-planned because of the election was pre-planned in order to have a different outcome for the next election. Um, I have come to see that everything the mainstream media has told us is going on is the opposite. And that the results of the election, the last election, were exactly what needed to happen for the planet and for the United States to recover. And I never, ever, ever would have thought that. But my colleague, Kelly Brogan, wrote the most wonderful blog after the last election um, about what this really was. And she brought in the story of the wolves being reintroduced to Yellowstone. And when the wolves, these ace uh, predators, alpha predators, were reintroduced to Yellowstone, it changed the course of the rivers. It changed the species. It began to change the entire ecosystem of Yellowstone Park from bringing in these ace predators. Things are not what you think. They're not what you think. And uh, um, I'm way more excited about it than I ever could have thought. So, so you see what, the Great Awakening really happening and moving us into the next evolution of absolutely, consciousness. And it, absolutely, and it's not happening the way we think. So what I'm finding is the groups, you know, you know that were called the basket of deplorables. Um, these groups that have been alienated the way we've been separated, where I am now with all of that is there is such an awakening. So I don't care if you are um, a right wing Christian. I don't care if you are uh, a radical left. What I care about is informed consent and health and i care deeply about what gets injected into our bodies and that is my um <clears throat> that's my thing i work with m uh m a m m ma'am millions against medical mandates.org everyone should join millions against medical mandates.org m a m m dot org we now have i call ourselves the army of the radical light <laughs> and so this is what we have to do everyone rising about this plan to inject everybody with uh, nanoparticles that change your RNA and change the human species, because that's the deep, dark plan uh, to make us part of artificial intelligence and to control and the, the population. First of all, depopulate to about 500 million. I don't know what um, BG has in mind, but it's to kill 14 out of every 15 people. Um, so this is not going to work for me. So I'm just starting with, uh, we rise up about our physical rights. And if you want a vaccine, go right ahead. No problem. But I don't want my grandchildren getting 69 shots by the age of 18, which has just been mandated in Maine, New York, and California to go to school, to go to university, we are decimating public education as we know it, because right now we passed a law in Maine and New York State, which, which mandated Gardasil, by the way, that's killing young women, California, 
you cannot go to school or university without being up, up to date on all these vaccines. And uh, we have a kid in our group, he has one more year in college. He's deathly allergic to two ingredients in the MMR vaccine. Do you know what his college told him? They said, well, have the shot in the emergency room so that if you go into anaphylaxis, you can be resuscitated. Now that's insanity. How do we get around this? You join mamm.org and you say, okay, I see the dark plan. I see it. I see what you're trying to do. And I watched it in my state of Maine because I went, I, you know, I put myself out there. I went and I testified before the um, legislature. Uh, it was like one flew over the cuckoo's nest because they'd already made the decision. So then we just declare, all of us, we do not consent. Listen, if millions of us say we do not consent, what are they going to do? Put us all in jail? Like, no, we're not doing it. We might need a separate company, uh, country. I don't know. I'm looking at the states that don't have this. South Dakota doesn't have enough trees and it doesn't have an ocean. Wyoming doesn't have an ocean. You know, I'm just looking at, at, at play, you know, if, if it comes to that or just buying an RV and going from place to place, it won't come to that. It won't, it won't. We have right now, uh, Saturn just went retrograde, as you know, that this is the Pluto return of the United States. So we redo the Bill of Rights and the Constitution to include women, black people, transgendered people, all of everybody, because the darkness has worked for centuries by splitting us, Jews against Christians, Jews against Muslims against whatever. I listened to a podcast today, the guy introduced himself. He said, I am a Jewish Christian Buddhist. I kind of, let, that's what we have to do. We have to look at what brings us together. What brings us together, black, white, uh, who cares? Um, blue, red, <laughs> the main thing, the main thing is do you want informed consent and bodily autonomy? And that to me is the issue the rest of it, I don't care about. That's right, I don't either. Event. Like what I've said, and I wrote letters to the editor, none of, none of them ever got published because the, the mainstream media is owned by darkness. And um, I said, if you lose the ability to consent to what goes into you or your child's body, everything else doesn't matter. Everything Game over. else is lost. Game over. Game over. So that's my issue. And as a, as a physician who's followed this for years, who knows all the vaccine ingredients, like you know, glycosphate and formaldehyde and polysorbate 80 that gets all that stuff past the blood brain barrier, um, fetal cells. I mean, it's insane. Little kids are getting six vaccines at the same time. It has never been proven safe, not ever. So the very fact, this is the one thing, women's wisdom, right? Women's wisdom is the mother bear instinct like you have that says, no, no, I'm not going to give over this perfect little baby whose eyes, kidneys, ears were made inside my body and then give that kid over to a doctor to inject all of these toxic substances before the child's immunity is even come on board because a child's full immunity does not come on board until eight, sometimes 12 years old. And we are injecting 99% of newborns with a hep B vaccine, which contains 15 times the FDA approved level of aluminum, which is a neurotoxin. What are we doing? And who is so out of touch that they would do this? I mean, I'm, what I'm about is reawakening the mother bear, where the woman says, you got to come through my body to get to my kid. It's not going to happen. So that's what I'm about. <laughs> I'm with you. And I'm like, can I put you on speed dial? <laughs> I want, Cause I'm like, where can I hide? How can I get around this? Again, it's, it's coming up against, I don't have, I don't know what the answers are, how to get around. I know how to get around a lot of stuff in terms of not participating and kind of, again, vibrating outside of this whole entire thing. But when, again, my freedom of being able to choose for myself comes into question and the three sages in me say, no freaking way. Yeah. So you're just um, going to, what you're going to find is that there are millions of us. See, this, see, we no longer can do this with one lone wolf at a, you know. So I was on a call last night with the, with the board of MAM. The brain trust that we have there, we have a guy who worked at Google, and he said, what we did at Google, the impossible things we did happened because everyone came together without any ego. 
And that's what we need to do. Come together with no ego whatsoever and, uh, and just all row in the same direction. And that movement is growing. It's just growing. We have, there's another uh, great group. It's called questioningcovid.com. Uh, go to that website. There are 48 videos on that website questioning everything about this pandemic. Everything. So, well, yeah. I watch your videos to keep me in alignment and to keep reminding me because it also feels good to know that while I do keep checking in with my own intuition about how much to say and when, it's and true. because yeah. I have to say who, because, you know, as Abraham will say, you can't change mass consciousness, especially if someone isn't in a frequency to receive what you're no. putting out. That's right. So, That's so right. it's trying to find the like-minded people who want the information or the people on the edge who are kind of searching but not trying to fight against the ones who, who are decided that yeah. it's all crazy. And I'm clear about that. So it's really like the timing of how much at what time um, it's come up in my coaching calls that I do in my inner circle. Someone asked me, well, what do you do when someone else is not wearing a mask? And I was like, well, Linda, I'm not wearing a mask. And I was like, there's not. When, when someone isn't wearing a mask, we discussed this last night and Sherry Tenpenny, who's been a vaccine um, a expert forever, she says, watch the man on the YouTube video. It's called The Shirtless Dancing Man. And it's a, it's a message about when someone, I haven't seen it yet, does the first, is the first one to join the other person. Like someone starts something, but it's the first person who joins them that begins the movement. So what she suggested is you're in a store. Someone else isn't wearing a mask. You go up to them and take off your mask. You smile at each other and you say, thank you. That's how we do it. So that we don't allow the shaming, you see, yeah, yeah. and the crowd control of the shaming. Kevin James just put out a very funny little video of these two guys and they're jogging and they're shaking hands and the next thing you know, a group shows up with masks on and their cell phones and they're reporting him. I mean, it's a cute little video, but you know, it's like, uh, have we, is this where we've come? that people are snitching. I love all the cops who are saying, we're not going to come in and uh, arrest someone for not wearing a mask. And so I like the cops standing up and uh, of course, Cordy Williams and the Freedom Angels. We've got all of that happening in California. He started uh, 1776 Liberty Now, I think it is. So I've joined his group. So we're all in contact, Sayer G, Green Med Info, there's so many of us. Ma'am is good. We've got Dell Big Tree, of course. We have um, RFK Jr. and the Children's Health Def Defense Fund, um, Rashid Batar. There's wonderful people. And you know the HR 666, you can't even make this stuff up, where they want to do the tracking and tracing. Um, I love reading on Facebook where the people say, you know, say, I'm sorry, we're in East Texas. That's not happening. No it's one's time to appreciate to you Texans. Appreciate the time to appreciate you Texans. Like all, I never thought all that. <laughs> right? All that 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 we you know that we um, blue state people who are so liberal you know and we were just decrying these people forever. Oh no 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 no! They're going to help us stand up for our constitutional rights to you know, lib health, happiness, and the pursuit of happiness, liberty. We cannot allow our constitutional rights to be eroded now. Mm -mm. We cannot. Mm -mm. So. And I'm on the team and I, I want to help. I want to do what I can. I want, to, I want you to think of me as someone who's really like the biggest cheerleader in the background saying yes to everything and what can I do and how much more can I help in the same way, right? Not, not in the fighting against, but through divine no. love, through right. vibrating high, through frequency, through... I love what you also said about death, which that's something we've talked about too. Uh, obviously, I talk a lot about Abraham, but the death, like that. I'm like, guys, this is where, you know, Anita Majani was on. Like, you know, like death is not... Dr. Eben Alexander, come on guys like death is not to be feared and so so it's it's 
when that fear is not helping your immune system or any part of you and you're right. fighting against that, like that's not the real issue. So I am lucky that I've at least put out, you know, shows where I've stood up into my power and said, here world, how do you want me to show up? And it was a very clear, oh, we want this from you. And it was law of attraction stuff on my show, Spirit, Purpose and Energy it gave me permission to have a voice sooner to a crowd who was wanting the information and taking it and living it. So everyone who's listening, I know you're not all listening on Spirit, Purpose and Energy. You're listening on all the other different shows that I have. Uh, one thing is true, whether you're male or female, women's bodies, women's wisdom needs to be in the hands of all the women that you know as an option for their power, for their empowerment, for their mind, body, soul preservation, for their understanding from different levels of everything I talk about on all these shows with the mind, body, soul connection. Dr. Northrop's going to address that in that book. She does it beautifully, much better than I could. She's got the degree. She's got the chomp. She's got the background. And, and while I aspire to do the same in the future, this is what you have to get right now for everybody. I'm, I'm I'm actually, I'm glad I started with goddesses never age and then moved to making, making life easy. And now I'm here at women because now my appreciation level, I'm ready for it. And I think the world is ready for it. I think women, especially with children and who are not quite sure about the vaccination conversation yet, they're ready for it. So if you're and if you know someone else who is on the fence or maybe they're kind of open, give them a book as a gift for some kind of event, whether it be Christmas or a birthday or graduation, uh, but make sure that we we protect and empower. It is time for feminine power to take over and to spread love, not to take over in a powerful, angry, mean, right. repressive kind of way, but in an inclusive, love-based, divine-guided, intuition-based collective so we can actually make the change that we all know we want, we want to see and everyone will be better because of it, not just the women, but you guys too. So That's right. Good. I, I thank you so much for being on. Again, everyone check out Amazon. There'll be links in the show notes. There'll be links under the video about going to Amazon and getting the book directly. I know I heard you talk about that you didn't do an audio book because you hired the British woman and the, then the COVID happened and then, right? So is We're there- waiting for it. I mean, you know, I, I, we thought it was going to come out at the same time. I also have a, um, you know, an online course that will be coming out very shortly. That is, the, you know, sort of the empowerment course for women what you need to know about your body and empowering your body at this, you know, at, for any time. So we've got a online course that's coming out as well very soon. Well, yeah, I'd love to help promote it. If you want to come back on, okay, we can good. go into good. it and dive into that because again, everybody, every woman needs this. If no other time in history, if it's not time to speak out, you're talking about thyroid issues, right? It's time to speak out. If nothing else, just for your truth, you know, yeah. people fight for other people, but just learn how to stick up for yourself and your truth. So right. thank you, Dr. Northrop, for being here. I'm so excited. Thank you thank so much. You. Great. It was a pleasure.